I'm going to delve into some of the big plays on some of the key drives. So first drive, of course, 11 plays. Jesus, get off the field. But uh, we we only give up three, which is, uh, I guess, a win, which is nice. But the Bucks took off uh, more than five minutes off the clock. Giants respond with an eight-play, 27-yard drive, which was absolutely murdered in cold blood on the second and one in which Wayne Gallman goes up the middle for 12 yards. They call a offensive holding on Zeitler in which he pulls and kicks out, I think it was JPP, zero hold on the play. I mean, not even like the, okay, he's holding, but we'll let it slide hold. Like, no, he doesn't, he's not holding anything. He, it was a legit block. And so that uh, puts us back. And then we, we get into a third and 11 situation. And we have a, a neat little trick play that looked like it was going to be disastrous where Jones kind of throws it, laterals back to Golden Tate, who takes his sweet ass time getting rid of the ball and took a shot at the end and throws it to Wayne Gallman for the for the first down. That's a trick play that, you know, because most of the trick plays that we've run have not worked out. <laughs> they have not worked to our advantage at all. It's like an end around fumble, fake field goal for a touchdown called back because there's a fucking thing. So it just seems like we've we've missed on the trick play. So it's nice to see one that was kind of successful because most of them have not been. And we get into another third and 10 situation, and then uh, Jones misses on a deep pass to Slayton, which he missed on a bunch of deep passes this game, which is unfortunate. But uh, again, look at Brady. I don't think Brady hit on many deep passes at all either. So maybe can blame the wind. Maybe can blame it not being on the same page, chemistry, whatever. I know on one pass... Slayton either looked up, I think he looked up too early and didn't run. Same with Shepard. He looked up too early instead of just running to a point and then looking up. Maybe they didn't look up early enough to see where the ball was going and adjust the route, but it just, they they were not connecting. And you can put some of those on the receivers, you can put some of those on Jones, but it's just like, if just one of those goddamn deep balls connects, we win the game. Uh, Dixon gives us a great punt that pins the, the Tampa Bay Bucks at the 10. Brady throws uh, on second down. Brady throws to Rojo, who uh, goes down to his knees. It seems to be a big thing with Rojo. He just loves going down to his knees to catch balls. And then Blake Martinez comes in, knocks the ball out. Awesome. We get the ball. Um, we have a, a third and 10, but we do get a neutral zone infract- infraction. So we move it up five yards to the Tampa seven. And uh, Jones throws a uh, a just masterpiece of a pass to Deion Lewis on like a wheel route on Devin White. Is that his name? Who's like one of the best linebackers in the game, if not the best uh, runner up to Blake Martinez. And Deion Lewis with a great catch because, I mean, he had a guy in his face and somehow was able to put out his hands and, and reel it in. We forced Tampa to punt and we go on a 12 play, 55 yard drive and have to punt. I mean, come on. These are the things that are killing us. We have third and four at our own 23. We got the defensive offside, so that gives us a first down. Great, uh, oh boy, great move by Jones to, to draw him offside. Then we have a third and seven at the Tampa 30, and Jones gets sacked for 11 yards. So we're in field goal range. It's a 47-yarder. It's in the wind. Who knows if Gano makes it, but this pushes us back 11 yards. And at that point, you're looking at 41 plus 17, 58-yarder. So we punt instead of attempting a 58-yarder. I think if you're indoors, in the dome, in Nolens, you know, maybe you would, I think you do attempt it and Gano probably hits it, but uh, just in, in MetLife, I think that's a sure, a sure miss, especially with the wind going on there. So we had to punt it. Tampa then punts thanks to a Leonard Williams sack. Leonard Williams potentially earning that big contract in the offseason. And then the next drive is a, another Giants touchdown. We have second and 10 at the Tampa 14. Jones uh, has, a, and the Joe Judge broke this down, the Joe Judge report. And you could see like he was avoiding certain, talking about certain things in this report. It was pretty obvious. And Sean O'Hara, who's the host on this one, also was kind of steering him and directing him with a lot of what he was talking about. Because you watch it and you're like, holy shit. So in this instance, it's play action to the right. I believe, uh, oh, so, okay, so Ingram goes in motion right and comes back left to see what kind of coverage we got. Is it man? Is it zone? Turns out it is, I guess it is a zone. I believe it's a play action, and Jones comes left, 
And according to Judge, his read is flat to to the corner. So it's Engram to Tate because Tate uh, Engram was in the flat and Tate was going to the corner. And so he was reading that. And because the corner dropped on Tate or someone didn't attack the flat, Jones quickly decided, and this was another theme of the night, was that Jones was, at least in the first half, getting rid of the ball quickly. And a lot of that was play design, and a lot of that must have been coaching, just being like, we needed you to get rid of the ball earlier, you know, and stop, you know, waiting for things to happen or stop trying to make plays and just go with your first or second read. If it's open, hit it. Don't even uh, hesitate, which didn't really carry over to the second half. So he hits Engram. Engram uh, manages to not run directly out of bounds. Instead, he cuts up field. So he catches the ball and immediately gets north, which is great. And it does that dive, that Superman dive for the uh, end zone, which it looked like he almost got in and he did not step out. But Judge was critical of him for doing that because it's like you, you could very easily fumble there out of the end zone or it becomes a touchback and we just gave up points, which I didn't even think about. He's like, we only want to do that on fourth down and on two-point conversions. And I was like, <laughs> how ironic you say that. The two-point conversion, the e- one of the easiest plays, right? But on that play, with Tate running the corner, you can see Tate put up his hand, and he is open. And it's a touchdown. Now, granted, we did score the touchdown anyway. We had a, a Wayne Gallman run behind Andrew Thomas and Shane Lemieux. Holy smokes, Shane Lemieux, welcome to the starting lineup. And we'll get into some like PFF grades, pro football focus grades, which I, I cannot, I don't understand the grades that they gave him. It just doesn't make sense. But as far as the eye test goes, I didn't watch the all 22 or anything, anything like that. I'm sure more will come out over the week as the week progresses, but he looked really good from where I was sitting, you know, especially on the touchdown run where he pancaked the guy. Like he just looks like he's, he fits in, he fits in very nicely next to Nick Gates. So you have Nick Gates, alpha male, who's, been described as nasty. And then you have right next to him, you have Shane Lemieux, who's described as nasty. So you got two nasty boys right next to each other, which I dig. And I think they should probably dress up like the nasty boys and and do like a music video. So we get the touchdown. It's great. We're now up 14-3. And uh, now everyone's awake and paying attention. Which, by the way, this was the highest rated Monday night football game since 2015, something like that. Very interesting. I think it, a lot of that's because of Tom Brady, but uh, I think most of it's because New York Met- New York market area Giants would love to see an upset, especially over Tom Brady, and we kept it close and we were up, you know, leading. It was very very surprising. I mean, the Bucks were favored by fucking double digits. So Tampa's next drive. Now this is what I'm talking about. It's it's we're under two minutes in the half, minute forty six on the clock. Tampa gets it. They're twenty five. They go on an eight play fifty three yard drive for a field goal. And they, and they basically take up the, the remaining uh, minute 46, just about. First and 10 at the Tampa 42, Brady hits Tyler Johnson for 15 yards on James Bradbury. Bradbury did not have a terrible game by any means. If you're, if you're, if you're looking at it uh, compared relative to the average or the median, it probably could be considered good. But as far as his performances this year, this is probably his worst performance, no? Seems like he gave up, he did give up more receptions, higher passer rating. He still had a pass or two defended, but it still felt like he was giving up some big pass plays. Third and two from the Giants, 23. Brady passed short right to Mike Evans for 22. Or no, so for the, for one yard. So this is a huge play by Logan Ryan. Third and two, and he stops uh, Evans short at the goal line, and it forces Tampa to kick the field goal. So we're up 14-6 at the half. We're usually we're very rarely up at the half, and to only hold the Tampa Bay Buccaneers led by Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, to two field goals feels good. Same time, damn it, guys, can we just finish out the first half and go in fourteen three? 